Hello everybody, Nick here at Scock and Dickie. Today's technical video is kind of taking a trip back in time to this old dinosaur, the small block Chevy. It's been around since the mid 50s. There's been a lot of changes, of course, over the years. We already know all those changes, just like you and me. We've been hot rodding for years. The thing is, is when you take a stroll through our showroom here, you get Copos and CRCs, you know, pro charge big block crate engines on, on stands just like this, and of course LS and LT engines, but the small block is actually still one of Chevrolet Performance's highest selling crate engines. They're simple and cheap, what's not to like? One of the things that we came up with years ago though for you tune port intake guys, are guys that need a TPI base plate to go to your Vortex cylinder heads. So today, that's what we're gonna be talking about. It's a product we've been offering for almost 20 years now. But we still get a lot of calls about it. It's still very popular, still a great performer for you uh, F-Body and C4 Corvette guys. So we wanna cover a few more things on there, help answer some questions about some of these intake swaps. So let's dive into it. And this piece right here is how we make that happen. This little project, like I said, is over 20 years old. It is actually an idea that was come up by our boss here, who got with GM engineers to combine the original tooling for the tune port intake manifold and combine it with the Vortex side of the Vortex intake manifold so we could finally put these two together. And you guys that have an 85 to 92, I believe, F body, and of course, you know, your 91 and older Corvettes that use the tune port intakes as well. If you're looking to swap to a Vortex based crate engine or of course swap to Vortex heads, this is the piece that's gonna make it all work together. So let's talk about some of the stuff you need. One of them, you'll notice in our suggested parts tab, we do have a set of intake manifold gaskets. These are the factory plastic style with the really nice uh, molded rubber around the intake ports and the coolant ports. This is what we highly recommend. They fit really well. Um, we also recommend the intake bolts. Let's take a look at those. These are the intake bolts that we recommend for the swap. Now you can use the factory ones that require a few washers to get it right. We'll give you a little bit of a pro tip that we learned over the years. If you use the factory style intake bolt like this in with this intake manifold, we notice that some of these holes are a blind hole. The bolt will bottom out while torquing it before it'll actually torque down the intake manifold. And we had some customers that had a, a few intake leaks and some coolant leaks early on and we learned that little tip. So we started offering these intake bolts. The benefit of these is that these are a chromoly that has been black oxide coated. Not only does it look sharp, this set of intake manifold bolts is actually cheaper than this set. So you get a higher quality bolt at a better price. So that's a pretty easy no brainer right there. Now, one of the things we need to tell you is while we do offer this intake manifold base plate, we no longer offer the runners, the upper plenum. Unfortunately, a lot of these parts have been discontinued through GM over the years. And the aftermarket hasn't exactly kept up as well as we wish they have. So this swap is for those of you who already have a running and driving car. When it comes to the performance figures of this swap, we actually did some dyno testing many years ago on an actual engine dyno. A stock tune port 350, you know, the old L98. It would put out at the factory at the crank somewhere around 240 to 250 depending on what year and of course what car it was in. We noticed on an engine dyno, you're looking more like 270, maybe 275. Just going to Vortex style cylinder heads in this manifold base plate, we noticed a pickup of almost 30 horsepower and 10 pound feet of torque. One of the old employees here actually on his personal F body, uh, Red Firebird, you've probably seen in an old Super Chevy article, he actually teamed it up with some machined Vortex heads some bigger valve springs, one six roller rockers, and a hot cam. He paired that in a 700 R4 and a 3000 stall converter, and it was a screamer on the street. So this is still a very hot ticket. We would recommend, if you guys are looking to put this in something looking for real big horsepower, give us a ring on what your options are. The tune port setup is still a lower RPM torque producing setup. It likes to live below 5,500 RPMs. Its peak horsepower in our dyno test were still below 5,000 RPM, but it made great low end torque. This would be great for street rods or just a street car in general. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the engine I'm displaying this on is, is doesn't look like a Vortec headed engine, but it is. It's actually a ZZ6 base crate engine. And I did that because I wanted you to, to know that it will fit 
the iron Vortec heads, as well as the aluminum based Vortec heads in the aftermarket. It will fit on the fast burn style heads that these have, as well as some of the aftermarket, you know, like uh, E-Tech Edelbrock heads work as well. We appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our tech videos this week. We actually got the idea to do one of these videos from a customer that called in, so we very much appreciate that. Please give us a like, a subscribe, and a share. And of course, let us in the comments below. Let us know how we did. Let us know how, uh, how we covered this topic and what future topics you would like covered. We appreciate you guys stopping by. We'll see you next week. Later.